Josiah, Katie, and Magdalena with our hymn devotion for this coming Sunday, February 28th. At Messiah and many churches, um, we've begun to observe the season of Lent, which is a time that we have an opportunity to sing hymns that focus on Christ's passion. And this Sunday, we're going to be looking at two um, passion-focused hymns, and the opening Him is the one that our devotion is on today, number 295, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. There's a story about the origins of this hymn that is probably apocryphal, meaning it's probably not true, but I think it gives us um, some imagery to think about as we sing this hymn. So the hymn writer, um, John Bowring, is said to have written this hymn after he went to uh, visit China. Um, particularly, he was visiting Macau, which is an island off of um, or near Hong Kong. So while he was at this island, he visited an old Portuguese church that had um, long since burned to the ground um, by a mob uh, about 300 years earlier, I believe. And even though we could just see ruins of this um, church, he saw that there was a spire or a wall, depending on which account you read, um, that still stood. And on top of that structure was an old metal cross. So even though this story is probably not true, um, because according to the history that we have, this hymn writer would have visited China after the hymn was published, um, I think that it provides a really vivid picture to accompany our hymn, especially if we think about this metal sun, this metal cross reflecting the rays of the sun in the midst of desolation and destruction. So think about that this coming Sunday as you sing, particularly stanza one and stanza three. In the cross of Christ I glory, towering over the wrecks of time, all the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. When the sun of bliss is beaming light and love upon my way, from the cross the radiance streaming adds more luster to the day. As we look at the rest of this hymn, we're reminded that the cross is more than just a relic of something that happened in the past. It has real significance to Christians today, and it has real power. As one commentary I read puts it, the cross represents the promise of Christ never to leave or forsake believers and to be with Christians always, wherever two or three are gathered in his name, even to the end of the age. So the presence of Christ that's shown by the cross gives us comfort and hope um, when life gets difficult. So we see in stanza two that the hymn writer shows the cross gives us this comfort and hope when the promises of the world and um, the promises of our life um, fail us. And then in stanza four, we're reminded that when we suffer temporarily here on earth, we are sharing in Christ's suffering depicted in the cross. And God also uses trials to bring us closer to him. In stanza four, we read that we find peace that knows no measure, joys that through all time abide in the cross. Thanks for taking a look at this hymn with us this week. And we wish you a blessed start to this Lenten season. Um, hope that it is filled with times of prayer and, and repentance and time in the word and in music. God's peace.